Hello, jewelry makers. So we are on day five of the advent. So uh, should we open it up and have a look and see what's in there? So I'm going to come over to the advent calendar. Let's see what it is. So if I open that, go to box number five. <gasps> are we ready? Look at this. Makes me so happy looking at these lovely colours. So, here we go. So, what you've got here, something really, really, really different, and that you've actually got loads of it. This is your lovely sort of an ombre rainbow colourful elastic. So, you can see there. Now, you've actually got lovely Wayne got the details for me. So, <clears throat> you've actually got there it's an unusually um it's a one mil so the gauge is a, is a one mil elastic and you've also also got actually 10 meters of it so if i sort of show you you've got through that that one mil you've actually got this incredible it's so lovely i just think it's a really bright festival ombre rainbow effect and that goes through and repeats throughout the whole 10 meters so you can see they're really really lovely workable stretchy elastic so we always talk about don't we about um stretchy bracelets stretchy bracelets are brilliant to make so this just gives it that sort of that extra dimension to it because usually we'd be working with um <clears throat> maybe a clear sometimes we very very occasionally have the, uh, have the black a stretchy elastic but this is going to this is going to be really really pretty so that's if you're using it as, as stretches um, with beads uh, and throughout the whole the whole piece if you're going to do a bracelet but what you can also do is when it's this pretty what you can do is you can use it um, as a medium uh, as a component on its own and have it all on show um, and because it's that slightly heavier gauge, it means that you can do really, really nice bracelets. So where you might only have one tiny charm on it or something like that, like this one that I've got here. So you can see there, so I've got a sliding knot and we'll go through how to do that. And a really, really pretty, and actually precious metal as well, um, little charm on there with an aquamarine. So you see, I wouldn't necessarily think of elastic just, um, I don't know, almost like a, um, maybe not working with your precious gemstones so you can see uh, i'm working there so that is my rose gold plated aquamarine and that's something that i would wear every day and really really practical take it on and off because we're going to do that sliding knot as well so that's one of the uses and you can see you're seeing all of that elastic in there so that, that's one use so we're going to do a few different things because so i guess this is more of um this demonstration is going to be more sort of doing um a few different shorter projects uh, rather than one main one. So slightly different to the first one I did because there are lots and lots of uses with this. So I've ten what I've done with it because I've never actually had this much elastic within these colours. So I've thought about the usual techni techniques that I like doing, um, but I might have done it with thread or cord or wire, and I've done it with this. So a couple of things that I've done, I've done, um, I had a little go with uh, my Kumahimo. So you can see here how something like that might look. So you get that really, really lovely look with the Kumahimo board. And it's really nice and obviously stretchy and it gives you that, that nice braid there. So absolutely you can, you can do Kumahimo with it. What you can also do, and that's what we're gonna concentrate on, is we're gonna do a bit of crochet as well with it, which gives you something. I mean, how gorgeous is that? So you can see, really see when you start to use the use the cord and you're knotting or, or, or sort of it's more concentrated you can really see that amazing rainbow color so you can see as well so the piece that we're gonna we're gonna work with um is so the finished piece there you can see so that is where we're gonna um almost going quite old school i don't know if um if you ever made them where you used to you make it like a coil of um I'd done it with with wool before but this time we're going to use the elastic and then we're going so we're going to create a long long line of it 
of the, uh, of the crochet, so a long line of it, and then we're gonna curl it up and stitch it all together and make it into, so it's really, a really nice uh, brooch if you wanted to, or earrings, uh, or you know, on a, as a bracelet there. So you can also see, so this section here, if we look at this, so if, you, if you're you know, a real whiz with crochet, which I absolutely am not, uh, you can do different um, different stitches and you can see how that works as well. So it's a really, really, it's pretty and it's really durable and wearable as well. So lots and lots of uses. So I'm gonna pop that one down as well. Um, so if we start off, if maybe, maybe you've not worked with um, different sorts of elastic before, um, what we'd be looking at is, so if we have a go at the, the, the little bracelet that's next to it where you can see that, that brightly colored pink bead, I think that might be quite a good, um, a good way to go because then we can we can what we can also do there is we can have a look at a few different knots that we can use with this elastic so uh, tools wise um you can i'm going to work with some scissors if you want to have a go with the uh doing the crochet uh working with the crochet hook so i have got i've got a size um number six there so it's a, just a, a crochet hook there uh, I might also work with uh, beading needles. That's just any needle will do. Um, I've just got some beading needles there. So pretty basic um, uh, tools, really. I've got some. Uh, I've got some spacers as well, so you can work with those. And I've got some um, some gemstones as well. And obviously, you want you know maybe think about working with your larger gemstones because you want to have something that that one mil. Uh, you're going to need to have a one mil hole going you know so that you can get the elastic through so if we start off and let's start off with something really really basic so we're going to do that that sliding that sliding knot so if i move these out of the way so to do something like this little bracelet here what we want to have is we want to have so we've got the we've got the bead or the charm whatever it is that we're going to have on here and we don't really want many other findings we just want to have that that knot that we can slide so you can see this is sliding and so that I can take that on and off. So it's, it's doing that sliding knot there. So keeping it very, very, very simple. So actually, so you've got coming up on the, on the screen there, you've got some of the, the, the gold plated spacers. So yeah, absolutely, if you wanted to add those on as well. Okay, so our starting point is gonna be, so I'm gonna take a length of, um, and I've probably got maybe about 30 centimeters, just over 30 centimeters. And you can see that lovely, ombre pattern so the purple's going into the blue to the pinks into the orange to the yellow it's really really lovely so i'm gonna um take the let's take this so i'm gonna actually go i might look and go with that pinky purpley color okay so i've put that on and that's gone into the middle of say the 30 centimeters or so that i've got so I'm going to take, so the first one I'm going to do, you can either have it free moving, but we could do a couple of different knots with this. So I'm going to take that and so the first one I'm going to do, I'm just going to do an ordinary, just a simple overhand knot and bring that in. And we can tighten that. Okay. And you can really see the minute you start to knot or do anything with this, that color, because it's, it's bulking out the elastic, that color really, really intensifies. So I'm going to do, turn it round. So we've got pretty much halfway there. A little bit of tension. Pull through and I'll do another knot. Now this knot, I'm going to try and control a little bit more. So I'm just holding it down because I want that knot to go so that it sits on the other side of that bead. So this might be a nice place you could put your spaces on there if you wanted to. Okay, so I've now I've sort of I've, that is now uh, caught in that position. So I know that when I wear that, that's going to stay like that. If you're working with things and you want to have it so that it's um, it, you know so that it's free it's free moving, um, you, you wouldn't do those two knots there. You could just let it so that it moves all the way around. Okay, so then what we're going to do? We're going to come round. I'm going to take these two ends because we want to do it have it so that we're not we're not creating we're not having any other findings. We just want to have that straightforward sort of these sliding knots. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find sort of where, so start, so I am being mindful of where, where the sort of the opposite and the halfway is. Now, I'm gonna be quite 
I don't want to waste too much of this. So I'm going to start and take this end. I'm going to go round, wrap that round. So I'm going to go once. So if I go once there, hold that twice. So now I've got two wraps. So just bring that in. And now I want to take that little tail end. I to get my fingers out of the way. So we've got we've got a circle with the original bracelet going through and then this little tail. So I'm going to bring that so it's going towards the back. And I'm going to to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to use my pliers to get that. So through the double loop of that, I'm going to take this end and bring that up through so it wants to go up through the one and up through and up through the second so it just peeps through so i guess i'm being a little bit it, it's it's almost like it's because i'm not i don't want a long tail to cut off because i don't want to waste any if i'd left myself a longer length I, it probably wouldn't be as fiddly as that now I'm sort of rolling that knot in between my thumb and my finger just to sort of tighten it and just pull through at the same time. So you can see what's happening there, it's tightening. That knot is tightening now and a little bit of uh, tension on there. And just give that a little bit of a... If I just pull it, what will happen is this one will just tighten first. And I, I want both of them. I want this one, sort of the one that's nearest to my thumb here. I want them both to. So that's sort of that, that rolling effect. So I'm going to come over to the other side. And again, aiming to get it so it's sort of like pretty much similar to the other one. I'm going to come through. So we're going once and so I've gone one loop around and two. So you might be able to see this a little clearer with the bright. So you can see, so if I move that there, we've got two wraps around and then can you see I, I take that, the little tail and it's gonna go behind the loops that I've just made and then up in between. So I'm just gonna bring that round and then it comes up in between the two loops. So hopefully we should see it pop out in a minute so you can see how that comes through. So now we can hopefully we'll see this better on these colours when we go when we roll that knot. So I'm just sort of giving it a little bit of a <clears throat> bit of a roll between my finger and thumb, tighten it up. So now what we should have there is a knot that slides. So you can open it right up. So it'll go close together. And if you've got big hands like me, that's really useful. And I'm then gonna, let's bring that. So you can see small wrists, but big hands. So that is that really, really comes into its own there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to snip that off. Snip that off there. And that is good to go. You can see how, you know, if, we, if you'd done that in, um, you know, say elastic that doesn't have that, that, that coated, that sort of that fabric on it, I don't think you'd be able to do that. These knots wouldn't, wouldn't hold on, it, uh, on elastic like that. And, it, and it, wouldn't look that, it wouldn't look that nice. Whereas this looks like it's part of that design, doesn't it? Really lovely festival, brightly coloured jewellery. And especially if you're going to start stacking these up. This is a really, really nice way to use maybe odd, you know, charms or odd beads that you've got, brightly colours. You can see how it really, really, um, you know, it works very, very well there. So those are our um, sort of like a, maybe, a, a, I guess, like a basic type of a, a way of working with that, um, with your elastic. If you want to do, um, so if we have a look at, say, maybe some different sorts of knots that you can do as well with your, if you're gonna do a stretchy stretchy bracelet. So what we could do, so if we do like, we'll do a first one here. If you've got lots and lots of uh, your gemstones on, uh, on here. Okay, so the first knot I would do is I'm gonna do uh, just a straightforward overhand knot. The next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come through. So as if I'm doing uh, one knot, 
and then I'm also going to go through again. And you're going to really, really see this well on that coloured uh, elas uh, coloured elastic cord. So you can see. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to tighten now from all angles. So now I'm putting real force on that. There's no glue or anything on there, and that has held beautifully. So that's a good way of doing it. So another way, if I just take another length of this as well, we'll do another. This one is sort of, if you think about when you're, um, if you're tying a balloon, you've blown up a balloon, and then you've got your two ends there, another way of, of working with it. So you're gonna grip here, and we can pull out, get a bit of tension on there. And let's just bring that around, so I'm gonna come through. So I've got my two ends together, pull through, and we'll tighten that up there. And again, I can just pull that, that through. But you can see on there, with this elastic cord, that is pretty much, that's, you know, a good amount of force pulling on that, that's not coming undone. So it's really, really super strong. What you've actually got around, going around the elastic, if we start to fray it there, you can see you've got that, that fabric. So what it's actually doing is, it's holding really, really tightly. So usually, when, if I did a knot like that um, in standard uncovered elastic, I would definitely, I'd be putting a little bit of um, clear nail varnish, something like that on. That has got nothing and that is full, pretty much full force put, uh, on that knot. So really, really lovely strong knot so that you can do something, something like that. And then you've got, you know, so you've got the function to it, you've got the aesthetics of the lovely, lovely bright colours. So you can see how, how well that's working. So if I put those to the side, so if we have a, we'll have a look, so we've done that sliding knot, um, we've done uh, uh, the, your stretchy knots that you might do, um, you know, if you're just going to do, uh, you know, standard stretchy bracelets. So maybe if you're thinking about what you want to do is you want to um, do maybe some other techniques where you might use uh, cords perhaps or um, wool or, or even wire which if we get time uh, we'll, we'll have a little go at that as well is perhaps think about um maybe doing some crochet with it so like i say i love 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 crochet i love um granny squares things like that and i can't i can't i cannot get it into my head but what i can do is a very very basic knot and this works really really well with it so I'm going to start off, and what we're going to do, so if we look at how, how this project is going to, uh, the stages that we're going to aim for. So we're obviously going to take it from, um, from the length that's like this, and we've got, like I say, so you've got your 10 metres there, so you've got loads and loads of it. We're going to crochet, do a very, very, very simple, uh, just a knot, like a, almost like a starting knot. And that's going to give us something like that. So even if you, if you did a length of this and you just kept it like that, that's a really nice, that's a nice look because you, again, you've got those bright, bright colours. Because like I say, if, you, if you're knotting with it, it just concentrates that, that colour and you can really, really see that lovely rainbow ombre. So that's, that's a way to work. And you know, we've, we've seen how the knots work. You could just knot it like that. Really nice. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it from this and we're going to sort of, so it's sort of, we're unravelling it which seems a shame, doesn't it? Because I really, really like that. But you can really see that, that lovely rainbow ombre again when it's like that. And it goes all the way through. And then we're going to take it from this and we're going to coil it up so that we get that, that little flat, flat disc. So that's the project we're going to do. So our starting point, I'll just move these out of the way. So what I'm going to start with, like I say, so I'm going to work with my uh, number six, and I'll have a look at, here we go. So I'm going to take it nice and slowly so that we can see um, how this is going to work. So I haven't cut anything off yet. If you want to have, um, if you want to have the, uh, uh, make them the same size as mine, so if we look, this is, give, this is a good gauge and you want to have it so it's the same sort of size, which is about, um, I would say probably an inch uh, diameter there. Okay, so you can see, so I've gone from, and this is quite an easy way to work it, you can see, so I've started off with the yellow and I've ended with the yellow there as well. So that's a good gauge. So if you're actually looking at the, um, if we're looking at the piece, so if I start, I'm gonna start there as well. 
So you can see how, so we're going the yellow, goes into the orange, into the pink, into the purple, the blue, the green, and then you can see and we're coming back into the yellow. So you, you know, there we go, there we are. Okay, so we know where we're starting from now. Okay, so I'm gonna just start, and the first knot I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a knot like that. So knot around, I'm holding this end and bringing this up. Okay, so let's just bring that in. And I'm gonna just tighten this up. So again, I'm just gonna roll this a little bit. So I want to adjust it so that I do get a little bit of that yellow. Because if I don't bring that down, what I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna feed that. So I'm loosening it just so that a little bit more yellow goes into the bit that I'm gonna crochet with. So I need to pull this, pull this down. Let's see where that is going. And then bring this in. Okay, so I'm just being really careful. I don't wanna waste too much of it because that lovely ombre. Okay, so I've still got my knot like that. So I'm gonna put my crochet hook in. I'm gonna tighten that up. Okay, so just move all this out of the way. Okay, so I want to get a little bit of tension now on the, on that cord. So I'm just sort of feeding it round, so bringing it round, and then a little bit on those two fingers there. Okay, so I'm gonna start off. So. What we're gonna do, so I've, I've just li linked it through the, underneath that, that finger there and then over the top here, okay? And I'm holding onto this bit. So now I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna go under the elastic there and bring through. So a little bit because you're working and this is about tension. So, because obviously you can pull on this and it will stretch the whole point of the stretchy elastic. So it's getting a balance and maybe you can, if the thing is, if, you, if you're feeling like some are really uh, holy and some are a bit too baggy, you can just undo it and start again and you won't see any kinks in this. So again, so I'm gonna go underneath, catch it on the hook and then pull it through the knot that was formed. So if this is the original knot there, the one on the hook, okay. So again, so I put the hook under bring through, I'm just doing that like a chain stitch and through the original knot. So again, I'm gonna let a little bit come through, hook under, twist around and through the original knot. Now you can start to see very quickly and it's so satisfying, you'll be able to see that ombre coming through really, really quickly. So we can already see only done a few of those stitches we can see how it's then going into that lovely orange and you'll be able to see how quickly this starts to build up into the much brighter orange now and again I'm just going to start bring this through And we can see how satisfying this is. It's really, really nice. You just need to work out about getting that tension. You can see I'm like feeding it through my fingers and bringing that through. And you can start to see how this is building really nicely. So I'm trying to keep that. So bring this round. So again, if, if you've done something like so, for example, if I went and it was way too, I'm gonna make this, make this one, let's exaggerate that a little bit, and I'm gonna have this, so this, this chain stitch here is gonna be too, too big, okay? And I, uh, you know, I mess it up like that, and you can already see it's sort of coming out of shape a little bit. So I can just take that one out, hold on there, back in, pull it down a little bit, so you can see I tightened it there a little bit, and then I can work back and bring that in. So again, we can see, so it's what color we're going into now. I can see my favorite color is coming up. I love this, where it goes into the, from this orangey color into the pink. 
feed a little bit more through. Let's bring this in. And I'm just gonna keep working my way through. So you could do, so if you, to do this project, what I've done here is, you're gonna, have, you're gonna do two lots of these. So one is a much longer length and I'll show you that in a minute when we've done a few more of these. So one becomes the bracelet on its own where you just almost like it's a, a wrap around bracelet. And then you do that shorter one from, like I say, going from the yellow to the yellow. Here we are, so we're now going into that lovely purple. Again, that, the transition of the colors is really, really nice. So let's let, feed a bit more of that through. So let's bring this in. And you can see how nicely this is working. So to sort of set, you know, I think it working with that, um, this cord, you know, I am no crochet at all. I, I love it. I think it's a, it's a brilliant uh, look. But as long as you have a play about with different size crochet needles, stick to something, you know, pretty simple. Cause I know what I'm, you can either, you can leave it at this or you then use other techniques with it. So. Like I say, I really like this as a, as a nice bracelet just on its own. Or you then, you know, sort of you're, you're working within your, um, your skill set, aren't you? So I know I can't do, I love, love, love those granny squares. Um, I just can't, I can't get my head around them because I'm not very good at reading, reading patterns. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. So we can now see we're into that lovely vibrant purple. And I know this is a nice, again, this is a nice transition coming up into this next color as well. So again, just bringing this in, make sure it goes through that original knot. So up and over and in. So it's like this around, hook it through, bring it through that original knot. Here we go. So we're coming into this next color now. So bring this through and it just blends so beautifully and we're into that blue now so it's almost like having the you know the best ombre I mean, we're always looking at gemstone strands where you've got that ombre effect and this is giving you that but in really really super bright bright colors so we're now if we look we're coming so we've gone through that blue so let some of that come through my fingers and we're now into that green so you can see you can then once you've got that tension and it is about the tension really that of how it sort of sits in you know in between your fingers that really really helps if you want to sort of speed up a bit so we're now gone into the from the blue into the green and bring that in so I'm gonna let that give it a little bit of a wiggle and bring that through. So I just need to bring that in a little bit more so I can go, there we are. So I just need to get that tension back again. Let's bring that in. And again, let's go back through there. So we're coming nearly to the end of that green. And I'm pretty sure we started with the yellow, didn't we? And we're gonna end with the yellow. So to do that little coil, the little um, coil, we wanna go from start at yellow and we're gonna end at yellow. So we're gonna just nearly, got a few more stitches of the green. Let's bring it through. And here we go, we can start to see we're going into that, into that yellow. So, so far, which is very unlike me, I've managed not to drop any stitches or have to put it back on the hook, which is very unusual. Okay, so you can see, so we started at the yellow, we've gone all the way through, and we're now back to the yellow there. So I'm gonna stop it there. Okay, so I'm gonna snip off here. Let's move that out of the way. So I wanna just have a bit of control with that, that knot there, I don't wanna let that go. I'm gonna release that, take that 
and go through the knot there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna close that and that will then. So we've seen on the other knots how it really holds well and that's now all secure on there. So you can see, and if I unravel it, and you can see a little bit here, like my tension was probably a little bit off there. You can see slightly, it's gone a bit funny there, but the rest of it, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so you can see that lovely rainbow ombre there. Okay, so what that does, that now gives us that long line. So if I'm gonna take this off, and we'll have a look. So if you want to make this one, so you can see what I've got here is I've got, I just continued that very long, long strand. So if we look at this, you can see how I've got sort of almost like two lots of the uh, purple and the blue. So I've probably like almost like doubled that, doubled that length so that I can go around and have that, you know, chunkier bracelet. But the bit that we're going to do, so same technique, and so we're going to do this this little bit on here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, take that flat, just like the little snake that we've done there. So what I want to have is I'm going to have that. I'm going to start in the middle. So now what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a needle I probably should have prepped this bit before we'll see how good I am at threading this needle and I've got some uh, some wildfire there so I'm just going to flatten that down a little bit and all you amazing beaders you might have something you know other thread that you want to you want to work with I'm going to pop that through, bring that in. So I want to, I'm going to feed a good amount through because I do have tendency to just that it will come off the other end. So I'm going to take some of this, cut off, move everything out of the way because what tends to happen is that I'll just bring everything with it. So now, because this is, we've got here, we've got that, that elastic. So remember at the beginning when we looked at it, we've got the elastic in there and then it's covered with that, that fabric. So what you can do is you can get, if you're working with a fine enough needle, you can get it through so it's going. So if I just sort of do this on the end, you can see how it's fraying here. You don't have to necessarily go through the elastic core itself. There's a tiny, you know, it's, it's, a, it's sort of like a, 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 that, that fabric sheath going around the, um, the elastic. So if you've got a sharp enough needle, obviously it will go through the elastic, but sort of getting it in the, in the right position. So I'm gonna start, and let's bring this in. So I'm gonna bring my, attach this. So I'm just gonna come up through. A Little bit of a tail there. And let's get that so it's hooked in and secure. So you can see, so there I've got, a, it's a bit of resistance there because that has gone through the elastic. So let's just get this through. So let's tighten that, okay. So what you're gonna look to do is you now, I'm gonna start a little bit here and I'm just working my way so I'm going to bring that round and I'm going into, so I'm holding it here and positioning it. I'm going to start and go through. Either I go through the, the knot itself if I can get it through or just through either through the, uh, through the fabric sheath part of it. I'm just going to come up and bring that through. So like, like with most projects, the first bit is the fiddliest bit because you haven't got very much of its wire work. You usually have hardly any wire holding it in place. And this one, we've got the thread. So I'm just gonna snip that off. So it's getting in the way a bit. I'm gonna start now to bring this in. So, and then I'm gonna go back through. So I've come up to the top. 
going to bring that so that's going through here bringing it around and tightening it up so that that now sits and what you're going to look to do is coil this round so again so let's go I'm hard I'm probably going maybe uh, so I've probably gone two knots and I bring this through and give that needle a little wiggle so it's going through and tighten that round and then I'm going to go through one of these so back into the yellow and bring that through so I've gone through the one but I've actually gone through the elastic part of the other bit so just take your time with it and bring this in so it's now coming round so now you're getting a very different effect so we've got the ombre uh, sort of going in the straight line but then what we've actually got is as we start to get those those colors on the outside and those rings go together you can see you're getting that contrast between what the inner ring was and the outer ring so again so i'm just going to try and go into that knot there and we'll come through so you can see when i've got that that resistance i'm actually going through the elastic as well so if you can get it into just a um, into the sort of the, one of the chain stitches rather than the elastic but it's not the end of the world if you do you just need to sort of pull it a little bit and I have got like a coated end needle but you can see it's a lot smoother if you're just sort of going into that chain knot but you can see how then so I'm now going to come in and I'm going to go I might take that round a little bit there let's get this in so you can see how I'm just encouraging it round. So again, so I've got one more here and I'm going to come through to that part there. Let's bring that in. I need to make sure that little orange tail doesn't come to the, so keep that tucked out of the way. Pull that round. It, it can be tempting because you want to sort of like race ahead with this. What you don't want to do is sort of have, is to, is to lose, um, to go maybe more than uh, one or two of the, uh, the knots because you won't get a, you won't get a neat um, spiral then. So I can see here on this section, this, I think this is where my tension when I was doing it went a little bit funny. So we can see it's a little bit baggy. I can see that knot is a little bit bigger than the others. But hopefully, when it's sort of, we can just, we'll put an extra stitch in there maybe, and that will sort of tighten it, tighten it up. So if we just bring that in a little bit closer, hopefully we can recover that. And again, I'm going to bring this in. So again, come up through, try not to go through that elastic there at the front. So if I bring that in, and pull that through sort of giving it a bit of a wiggle so it pops out there in between your stitches you can see how this is starting to really really come together so what I'm doing as, I, as I'm doing I'm actually twisting and turning this because you can see naturally it falls into that lovely that lovely twirl as well so you can see I'm gonna, just going to start and bring that through so you just want to twist it so that your knot is going in the right way. So you can see the difference of the knot. So we've got, that's the, that's the back of it and that's the front of it there. So I'm just twisting it so that it goes into position. Right, see, so I'm coming from the inside. So I now want to go up through here so that the front of the knot is in the right position. Make sure I don't get all of that in there. So just tightening it ever so slowly and getting that into position. So I'm at the front there, so now I'm going to come in and go through here. But you can start to see already, you know, we're, we're two colours in there. So you're basically, you're going to keep going. So again, if I come through here I bring this in and again I need to twist that round so I might move it like that now so that I'm going bringing it through 
and I'm going to bring that in. And I think I need an extra stitch in here because I've got a bit of a gap there. So I'm going to come up through that, that part. So like I say, try not to go much further than maybe one or two, two knots so that you're not you're keeping it so it's nice and compact because that's what we want to get those colors through okay so you can start to see so we're now on to we've done our green and we're now into that blue there okay let's pull that through so you can see we can really really start to speed up now because we've got a bit more to to hold on to again i'm turning it so that almost that that plat look you can see from the front. Just check that that's coming up through there. A little bit of a wiggle. And again, and if, especially if you're working, um, you know, in a bright light, and you can almost see the tiny holes, which are great places to get, you know, in between each of the stitches, and that's a good place to get your your needle to come through. So again, so you can see, I'm starting to hopefully speed up a bit there okay yes yeah, so it does look a little bit like the base of a, a basket and um, you could do that it just makes me think of the um i remember being younger and those coiling making um placemats that's what i used to do so you can see how i'm just bringing this up here i think it was french knitting which absolutely because you've got those 10 meters and if you've got one of those little i think they were they called little dollies something like that weren't they you can um you could have a go with that, that would be nice. So I guess a little bit like your, your Kumahimo look. So you can see, so again, so now we're coming into um, those next colors. So I might do one more and then we'll move on to how we put those spaces on. So you can see actually, that's a good point. So you can see on there, my needle was getting caught on the elastic. So you can see how it's pushing it out there. So I'm just gonna move it ever so slightly so that it goes into that, that natural gap. But you can start to see how this is now really working working its way around but I am as I'm doing it I'm turning it around so that, that stitch faces uh, the right way and we can see how that's starting so I can already see so if I'm nitpicking with my work here you can see I've left a bit of a gap there so what I need to really do is to then go back in near the end I can just stitch through and give that give that a couple of stitches there so probably when I got to that point I might just go rather than keep going around I just sort of like nip over that row and then and then secure that there so you can see how that is then going to build up to something like this okay so we've gone all the way around so you can see there's the that we've, there's our um, little disc our rainbow disc and um, I have so I've, I've completed the whole thing from the yellow to the yellow going all the way around. And this is where, so if you've got some nice spaces, um, so what we can start to do is we can add in, so I'm gonna have a look, if we look at this one, you just go in and you can add in um, all of those. So actually thinking about it, you know when I um, when I was doing the, uh, that, the original one, the one I just had then, I snipped off that little bit of wire. Oh, sorry that little bit of um, the wildfire so maybe leave a little bit longer for that because you could use that one to attach that center one if you want if you want that one so what I'm going to do now so I've got the wildfire is still attached and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to use so I'm going to I'm actually I'm going to go in and snip these off now so that they don't get in our way I'm going to do that this one here so you can then use those each chain st stitch here. So I'm gonna sort of tuck that in a little bit as well. I can use each of these as a guide as to where to put the spacers. So I'm coming up through, come from the front, pick up one of the spacers and then I'm gonna go down into the stitch next to it and position that, tighten that up and that's gonna sit really nicely, which then is gonna lead me, I'm then gonna go into the next one, come up through, through the next stitch, let's find where that hole is, 
give it a bit of a wiggle so that it pops out in the right place. But this means that if you're following those stitches then, that's gonna give you a really, really lovely, neat, uniform edging. Because all you've got to do is you just need to go through the stitch next to it. So you can see much, it's much, much quicker now to build up this nice beaded framework. So again, so I'm gonna go through, let's come up through here. And I'm using my finger and my thumb there to look at the position and the drill hole in those spaces to sort of encourage it so that what, what's facing forward is rather than the hole, is the actual the metal part, the, the full, the roundness of the, of the spacer bead. So I'm gonna keep going through and you can see how this works. So I'm just gonna give that and you can see how, there we are, that's gonna sit in nicely. And again, bringing this in. So let's go through and tuck that in there. So you don't have to do this, but I, I really like the mix here of, um, you know, these are precious metal spacer beads. So it's sort of like a difference, isn't it? Of You might think, oh, well, I'd use, just use my precious metal spacer beads with, um, I don't know, perhaps other precious metals or high-end gemstones. I think it's a really, really nice look to use uh, something like this, you know, so, so your, your stretchy elastic, um, you could absolutely do, you know, lovely little wish bracelets and mix the two. Mix your stretchy elastic with your, uh, your precious metals. I think that works really nicely. Um, so I'm going to, again, we'll take just a few more so then you can see how this is they're sitting. So again, we'll just bring that through. I'm using the, each stitch as the guide of where to come out with my needle again. and bring that through. So you basically are gonna work your way all the way around. So I'll do this last one, keeping it quite nice and tight. Bring that through. Again, making sure that I control where that thread is going and how that spacer sits. So rather than it looking, so if we had something like that, you know, you can see that hole there. So I'm just gonna position it and then tighten the, tighten the thread. But you can see how, even if your, this bit was a little bit uh, ropey, by just going through each stitch, you've got that uniform framing. It just works really well, makes it neat. So again, bring that through. Now I know I went through the elastic in that bit, I could feel a lot more resistance, so but it's okay, it's not the end of the world. We can just carry on. I didn't really need to admit it actually, did I? There we go. There we go, let's bring that through. There we are. Okay, so we can see how this is building up. So let's bring that there. And you can see how quickly I've pretty much done that half of the, of the framework. So you carry on, carry on doing that, and you can see how that works. Now in this bit here, when you get the, when you get that section, what you can do is just sort of like, just nip that in a little bit so that it's a bit smoother than just that really, really blunt end here. So what I would say is you can just nip that in. And when you get to that point, you could just add a couple more stitches if you needed to, just to try and get that so that that, that seam, that edge uh, works a lot, a lot better. So if, you, if you've liked that technique, um, what you might want to do is you might want to have a go um, so you're using the same technique but what you're doing is you're going to use a different different medium so maybe have a go with what's in your um, uh, you know the elastic that's in the advent but what you can do as well is so something like this so if you've got wire in your um, in your in your stash what you could do is you could absolutely do the same thing but working with wire so you've still got your crochet hook uh, you're still going to do the same sort of thing, so doing that long line of um, uh, of the chain stitch, and then you're going to use the um, use the same sort of stitching uh, to create that that effect, but with wire. So it's a good, it's almost like it, it's a lovely project to do, but it's also um, it's quite good to see the difference of how you how you would then work um, differently about tension. 
uh, when you're working with different materials. So you can see here, so what I've got now, you'd build it in exactly the same way um, as we did. So you'd have that, that long line, you'd set it up in the same way, and I use the same size hook. The wire that I've got, now I've, I've, I've deliberately looked through my um, stash of wire, and I've got um, a 0.25, so you can see here, so it's a, it's a nice fine, and I'm also looking for a, a soft wire. What we don't want is we don't want a, um, a 0.25 and it'd and it be really rigid. So you're looking, th look through your stash and get the softest wire that you've got. You'd set it up in exactly the same way. And you're just gonna do that long length of uh, the cha that chain, that chain stitch there, so you can see here. And again, in the same way, we're gonna leave a bit of a tail at the end, bring that through and tighten that off. And you're going to do the same thing of working your way, bringing it round. So my starting point would be, so I had a couple of goes at this and one I just started off so I got a plain, the plain end so you can see how that looks. And I actually found the easiest way was to then leave a tail, pop that, pop the pearl on and that gave me a base to work around. So I could start with that. I've got a long tail there and you can see I can come through, come through the stitch that I've got, bring it back through. And depending on the drill hole that you've got in the, the stone, so I'm using a pearl. So these are sometimes like smaller drill holes, but let's give this a go. I'm gonna go back up through Let's feed this through. And then I can start, so I'm bringing it around and you're gonna start and stitch round in the same, the same way. So I'm gonna take this tail, let's bring that in. And bring this through. So it's quite an interesting, um, project to do in that you know you've worked with you've worked with your elastic which is very 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 forgiving you can put you know it's really stretchy uh, it, you know it, it you don't have to worry about it sort of if you're going back and forth uh, with it. it's not going it's you know it's not going to break or snap like that very very different with wire so you'll have to handle it in a, in a different way but with this one you can see I don't need my uh, like a needle and thread with this I can use this this fine wire as the needle and thread so same technique, it's just how different it is with whatever material you use. So if I keep going, you just keep going in the same way, building up that, that, that coil, that spiral, and you see how quickly that's going to, that's going to work there. Again, if you like doing, um, trying to sort of like squeeze everything in, if you like doing little Easter makes as well, this is a perfect way. So if you do your nests, you make your nests in that way and then you can just shape them like that. So you, what you've actually got there is a, you know, that lovely sort of like that nest look, but it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's pretty, pretty secure. Pop your, um, pop your pearls in and you've got those, those ni that nice little birdie nest there. But if you want to have the, um, make the earrings like I've done, so you would stitch in, if you're gonna do it, so the same way that I'd done it, uh, you would start with that pearl, so that pearl would already be there. We've then got, our two tails, so I'm then going to go in and I'm actually going to snip that off there. And again, so let's take one of these, see if we can get the two lots of the wire through. There we go. And that's going to sit up like that. And I come in and do my wrap loop there. So although it's, you know, it's very, you know, 0.25 is probably one of the finest wires um, that I work with. But although you've got that look, you know, it's, it's delicate, it's very, very strong because if you think by doing each of those, the, the stitches through it, what you've done is you've work hardened it, you, you're just going back and forth on itself. So it's actually, you've got that lovely fine look, but super strong, which is really nice with jewellery. So I'm just going to take this one now. And you've also got lots of areas to secure into. So I'm just going to push that through. I'll go one with that side and one that side. 
and you can see how then you can position it and like I say you've got that great matrix there of, of wires so you can see how using the, 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 the material that you've got in your advent that lovely sort of coated brightly coloured elastic maybe have a go with that and then do the same same technique same tools not like you need different different tools it's that crochet hook and work with your wires and you can see how you can then go on and create all sorts of different different jewelry there it's a really really lovely uh, project lots of different sorts of jewelry you can make with that and that brightly colored really nice Christmas makes so you can see how that that works there so yeah we've got you've got that all that crochet you can do kumahimo stretchy bracelets loads and loads and loads of different projects so yeah, so I hope you really enjoyed that demo. It's slightly different, little little bits. But yeah, so and yeah, Merry Christmas, jewellery makers, and I'll see you on Saturday.